Hi designers, welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this 3D letter effect for replicating a vintage postcard look. So these are some examples I came up with. It's always a good idea to look at references to see how other people are using the type treatment, the thicknesses, the strokes, a lot of great examples to use as a reference. First, take the type tool, T for shortcut, and type the primary word you're going to be using. And in my case, I'm using Barlow Semi-Condensed Black, which is a nice thick font. Now I'm going to make a copy of it, holding down Option and dragging. And you can change the color now if you'd like. You may want to move one to the foreground. And with the Blend tool, W for shortcut, you're going to click on the top layer of text and now the second text. Double click on the Blend tool. And we want this to be, let's just make it so we cannot see the steps. And what you'd want to do with both of them is give them the same stroke color and thickness. So in my case, a three point stroke looks good. And the nice thing about using the blend tool is we can grab the bottom one and you can shift the shadow in any direction. So this is a very flexible method where you use your arrow keys to fine tune it. And once you're happy with that, you can click off or make sure the whole group is selected here of the blend and go to Effect, Warp, Rise, if you want this kind of wavy look to it. You're welcome to use any other shape, but for this, let's just do a classic Rise, and here you can adjust the bend in whichever direction. Let's go with 20% bend. And you may want to scale it. You may also want to hold down Option and make a working copy. But let's say we want to mask another image with the blend group selected. Let's do a copy command C and paste in place, which is edit or paste in front control F. And now I'm going to go to object, expand appearance and click into that group until you have just the top one selected. I'm going to cut it command C and delete the other expanded text. So now I still have the working and then I have it expanded of the shape now that it's bent. And now you can work with the stroke and fill. I'm going to do another copy and paste in place. Command C, Command F, and let's grab another image. We need to move the image behind the text, which you can do Command and your left bracket or Control right bracket will bring it to top. And now with the text above the image, you need to make it a compound path by going to Object, Compound Path, Make, and this will now allow us to make a clipping mask. So with the text selected and the image, go to Object, Clipping Mask, Make. And whether you're in your Layers palette, you need to organize to keep track. I typically just lock layers that I don't want to move, such as the image with Command 2 will lock. And Command Option 2 will unlock everything. If you want to adjust the image within the clipping mask, you should be able to use the direct selection tool, A, and hover until you can see the outline of the image. And then you can switch back once you've selected it to your black arrow and you can scale and adjust that. Or in my layers palette, you can see my clipping group here and I can double click to click into that, which will also allow me to move the image. And if I want to enhance or add layers of color to make it more vibrant, I can grab another shape and possibly work on overlaying an effect with the transparency, depending on what the look that you're going after. So that's a little bit bright, or you might play with the tint color. And then you can add your supporting text. And don't hesitate to make copies and experiment with the colors of the text. And sometimes by accident, you might find some really cool effects. You can also check your stroke and see the alignment, whether it's to center on the inside or on the outside. I think that's looking pretty cool. And as a bonus, here are some fonts that I used that have a vintage look to them. So here's the appearance and here is the name of the font. If you'd like to screenshot or pause the video and those will help you create a vintage postcard. I hope this video helps with your next project. If it did, please like the video so others can find it, and that lets me know that you like this type of content. Thanks for watching, and see you next time. Take care.